Today, I'm going to review and demo the PV Invective Mini Head, as well as the matching 2x12 Invective cabinet. You're going to hear the amp both mic'd up with an SM57, as well as the direct output coming from the back of the head. I'm not going to do any editing of the sound after recording. We're going to play through the amp with different guitars, both on the clean and the lead channel. There is a ton to cover, so let's get right into the features. The PV Invective Mini Head is a 20 watt tube amplifier that can be run at 20, 5, or just 1 watt if you're really trying to keep the volume down. It has three preamp tubes and two power tubes, which are lit up by these pretty cool little blue lights. If we look at the front of the head, we can see that on the far left we have our guitar input, which is right next to the controls for our clean channel. This is a two channel head with a clean and a lead channel, although some people do consider the tight switch on this amp to act as a crunch channel. Now if we look at our clean channel, we have a gain control which essentially just works as our volume since there's no master volume on the amp and we have a two band EQ low and high. Let's turn on the amp and start to dial in that clean tone. The lead channel has a lot more going on with a three band EQ, low, middle, high. We also have a pre-gain and a post-gain as well as tight switch, boost switch, and the noise gate. Let's start by dialing in the EQ just a little bit, but keep in mind that right now you're just hearing the signal direct from the back of the head right into my interface and later on we will mic the cab up and you'll be able to hear the difference. We also have a resonance and presence setting which affects both our clean and our lead channel. Let's take a listen and hear what that sounds like.
One of my favorite features about this amp is the built-in noise gate, which can be toggled on and off for the lead channel. It sounds really natural and smooth. You can still be dynamic with your playing, you know, picking soft, picking hard. Now, if you hold a note for long enough, obviously the noise gate's going to kick in, but it does a really good job at making it sound like a smooth transition. There's no sharp cutoff, which I really appreciate. It really helps get rid of the extra feedback and overall hissing of the amp, especially when you're cranking that gain. The last thing I want to show you on the front of the head is what the boost and the tight switch sound like. I feel like the higher frequencies are starting to come through a lot more when I hit that boost switch. Take a listen one more time. Okay, let's listen to the tight switch. You can hear a pretty dramatic change when we toggle that tight switch. I did look at the manual and PV is saying that not only are they dropping the gain, but they're also altering the EQ a bit when we hit that tight switch. Let's move now to the back of the head. I almost forgot to mention that just above the power and standby switches, we have two tube status indicator LEDs which correspond to each of the power tubes. Basically, if we are in standby mode, both of these LEDs are gonna show up red. And if we have both the power and the standby switch in the on position, both lights should light up green. If we see anything other than green, this could be a sign that our tubes are wearing out or there could be some other problem with the amp and wanna have it looked at. Okay, now to the back of the amp. All right, on the far left, we have our AC power inlet, you know, for plugging in one of these things. And then next to that, we have our power output switch for one, five, or 20 watts. I usually use the one watt setting for practicing at home, five watts for band practice. And I've only actually had to use 20 watts once, and that was because I was playing a gig and we didn't have the guitars coming through the PA at all. We were playing in basically a large garage and I needed all the volume to just come straight out of the cab. So I turned it up to 20 watts. I think I had the post gain on the lead channel at like seven and it was plenty loud. You can see here that we can set our impedance to either 16 or eight ohms. And then just below that switch, we have our speaker output. If we look at the direct output section of the head, we can see that in the center, we have an XLR output that's great for recording. We can plug directly into an audio interface. We also have a headphone output, which is great for practicing at home. There is also on the far right of the head, a USB output, which we can use to go directly from the head to a computer and not use an audio interface at all. All of these outputs use a cab simulator that is supposed to sound like a mic is set up about three inches from the cone of a 12 inch speaker. If we hit that defeat switch, we can cut all volume from the cab. It basically sends the power to a dummy load so we can play using their direct outputs, but we have no volume coming from the speaker cabinet. 
We have a ground lift that PV recommends using if we have some humming going on in the direct output signal. The last thing that I want to say about the outputs is that when we select 1, 5, or 20 watts, we are only affecting the volume coming from the speaker cabinet. This setting has no effect on the volume of the direct outputs. Another cool feature about this head is that we have an effects loop. The effects loop can be toggled on or off with the included foot switch. If we plug the foot switch into the top here, we can control the channel and the tight switch. And if we plug it into the bottom, we can control the boost and or gate as well as the effects loop. Now, uh, one note about the foot switch is obviously we only have two buttons. So if we wanna be able to control everything, we need to get a second foot switch. Also, if we want to control anything with the foot switch, it has to be toggled on the front of the amp. So if we want to, for instance, go between clean and lead with our foot switch, we have to have the button pressed for the lead channel on the front of the amp. If we want to control the gate and the boost on the foot switch, we have to have both the gate and the boost toggled in on the front of the amp. I did decide to pick up the Invective 2x12 cabinet as well. It can be run in stereo or mono, which is awesome because we have a V30 on one side of the cabinet and a cream back on the other side. Since we can play with just one speaker at a time or both together, we unlock this whole other layer of tone possibilities between the amp and the cab combo. The cabinet can be run at 120 watts in mono and 60 watts per channel in stereo. The cabinet's made of three quarter inch solid pine. It has real sturdy handles. It's got this nice little white pinstripe thing going around it, which looks nice up against the head. I decided to add some extra rubber feet so I can run the cabinet vertical. And then the little head doesn't look so little on top. For the sound demo, you're either going to be hearing the direct XLR output, or I'm going to have the cab mic'd up with an SM57, just slightly off center. I'm not going to edit the sound in any way after recording. I really want you to hear what the amp might sound like if you were to bring it home yourself. We're gonna hear clean tones, lead tones, different guitars, so leave me a comment and let me know which tone you like best.
I think my favorite tone was from that last riff you heard on my PRS. I was on the lead channel and I had the V30 in one side and the cream back in the other. Felt like that was a really nice blend. Also, it's really close to the sound that I usually hear when I'm playing out of the cab at home, which makes sense. I'm really surprised at just how different the direct signal sounds from the sounds I'm hearing coming out of the cab. To me, the direct signal sounds a lot darker and maybe even a little bit muffled. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It just creates more possibilities when we're trying to record and come up with different tones. The difference has really stood out to me in making this video, but also it's something I experience playing in a band. I normally have the direct signal going into my ears with some in-ear monitors and the sound is definitely very different from what comes out of the cab. I've been using the amp and cab for about six months now, and I love just how versatile it is. It's loud enough to play in a band, quiet enough to just play at home, and I really like that I can use the direct output for in-ear monitors. A few highlights for me would be the noise gate, tight switch, and the crazy amount of gain that you can get out of this amp. The noise gate is awesome, it's really well dialed in, and I have it on almost all the time, especially when you have a lot of gain coming through the amp. It's just nice to not be constantly hearing a bunch of feedback and hissing. The tight switch is awesome, especially when you're playing on a 7 or an 8 string, or just low tunings in general. It adds a lot more definition and clarity. The amount of gain that you can get out of this head is pretty crazy and you definitely don't need to run any extra distortion pedal or anything to get a nice distorted sound out of the head. Which makes sense because that's pretty much what this thing is made for. The clean channel doesn't have a ton of features to it, but it sounds great so not going to complain about that. The cabinet seems well made, it's not super heavy so I can actually carry it myself. It's super fun to play with the different tones I can get from the different speakers. If you're looking for a great sounding metal amp that's easy to use, is versatile, and easy to carry around because it's so little, the PV Invective MH is a great option. I personally bought this amp and cab with my own money, and I'd say it was worth it. I'll have links in the description for all the different things I used in this video. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time.